Hi and welcome to High on Coding. I'm your host Mohammad Azam and in this particular video I will introduce you to the concept of view model. Okay, so the best way to understand the concept of view model is to check up or check a view that will need a view model. So here's the view and as you can see it's a registration page, very simple. You have a username, you have a password and you have a re-enter password. Now if you're using the binding mechanism of ASP.NET MVC and you want to bind these three fields to an object, you cannot really bind it to a user object because a user object does not contain a re-enter password field. I mean, of course, you can go ahead and add the re-enter password field to the user object, but it wouldn't really make any sense, right? So my user object contains just the username and password. Most probably this will be the, the only basis of the attributes or the properties that it will contain, right? And um, so how can I capture username and password and re-enter password? Or how can I uh, create a class that will control how the view actually works? Or how can I create a class that will represent how the view will look like? Okay, so that is called a view model. So if I go and I just created a view model folder and I'm going to say add a class and I will say this is my registration view model. Okay, so registration view model will contain all the fields, all the attributes that your registration view will require. So the first thing that it will require is what? A username. So I'm just going to add a username. And the second thing it requires is a password. So I'm just going to add a password field. And the third thing it requires is a re-enter password. Okay. Now, this particular view model, which is a registration view model, represents the view, which is the registration view. Okay. Now, if you don't want to take that route, you want to change your entities, your user entity, to hold this re-enter value, I would advise you to do to against that. The reason is that if you go that particular route, you will be adding different fields, different properties to your user object, to your domain object, which uh, doesn't necessarily need them, and you will just overcrowd it with uh, useless properties. Okay, and also if you're using the wrong approach, which is you are creating your domain objects as a to reflect what is on the page, then what you're doing is you are allowing your view to control the entity or the domain. And you should never do that. Your domain is the heart of the application. We should control everything. Okay, so if you do want to have some flexibility if you do want to uh, have a class or a model that reflects what is on the view then you're looking for a view model that we just created it's called registration view model okay and i will go to my let's see where is my views and you'll see if you go to the index it's going to find this register action and you can simply go to your controller and registration controller, you can create, uh, you know, you can create the register action. And instead of taking a user object, it's just going to take a regis, uh, registration view model. Okay, view model. Now, the question now becomes that how do you transfer from a view model to a domain model or an entity, okay? So there are many different ways. In this one, I'm just going to say that after you have validated the view model approach, after the view model is valid, so I'm just gonna say after validation, everything is okay. What you're gonna do is to transfer. So you can say new and then user and then you can only create the things that you want, which is the property of the user, and assign it viewmodel.username and pass. 
password is viewmodel.password. Okay. Now I know if you, I know you must be thinking that what if I have a really complicated view with drop down list with things like different properties in the view model, how would I do that? Well, you will use a, a tool or you will use a way which is called a, uh, it's called an auto mapper and it's by Jimmy Bogard. I will show you how you can use it in the, in the next screencast. Uh, but this is a simple one. This is a simple screencast and this is a simple view model to a model conversion, which we can do like this. Okay. And after you have converted, you can use a repository or whatever action you want to take, like save the user You can do anything that you want to do. So the main purpose of the view model is to reflect the view. Okay. And the reason that you don't want your actual domain model to reflect the view is that you will just get, it will, it, it won't make any sense. And also you will be, uh, kind of like overcrowding the domain model with things that does not really belong over there. It belongs in the view or in this case, belongs in the view model. That's pretty much it. I hope you like the screencast. One last thing that I want to discuss is donation. I'm always looking for donations. Uh, everything that I do, I don't get paid for anything. And the high encoding team, I can get more members if you are willing to donate. I have put a donation page. You can donate one time or you can donate a monthly donation, which is like $2, $5, $10, it's like nothing, it's a cup of coffee, right? Uh, it's less than a cup of coffee that you'll get every day and like on the weekdays at your work. So please open your heart, donate. Uh, it takes time. It takes 30 to 60 minutes to record a video. And then uh, there are hosting costs and then the bandwidth usage that uh, that is uh, one of the major expenses for high encoding. So think about it. I will greatly appreciate. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much.